had been a couple of months since Gordon had retired from express service, and he was getting used to commuter runs. It was a bit different, stopping at stations he'd previously just passed in the blink of an eye. It hadn't been uneventful either, as shown by the Queen's Fire Service medal hanging in his berth in the sheds. As he arrived at East Knapford, Gordon noticed a middle-aged woman standing on the platform. She appeared to be handing out flyers and talking passionately to the waiting passengers. He'd seen her doing that there before, a few times. Station Master, who is that woman handing out leaflets? Oh, that's Mrs. Angela Johnson. Excuse me, Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson turned, surprised. Yes, uh... My name's Gordon. I was just wondering, Mum, what's on those flyers you're handing out? They can't be for a fate or anything. I mean, I've seen you doing it for the past couple of months. I've been doing it for a couple of years, Gordon. Mrs. Johnson strode over to the steam engine and showed him one of the flyers. This is my daughter, Michelle. She went away from home two years ago, and we've not heard from her since. She was only 17. Oh. Gordon looked closely at the flyer. Printed in the middle was a photo of a teenage girl, and below were her details, as well as some of the information regarding her disappearance. We've been trying to find where she's gone, just to make sure she's alright. Arthur... That's my husband, and I haven't heard from her, and... (laughs) The guard's whistle sounded. I'd like to help. Can you give one of those to my driver? Yes, thank you. Mrs. Johnson held a flyer up, and Gordon's driver grabbed it as they went past. What do you have in mind, Gordon? His driver asked. I couldn't help thinking the girl in that photo looked a bit familiar, driver. I think I may be able to help somehow. But as Gordon brought his train up to mainline speed... He couldn't help wondering exactly how. He was still pondering it when he arrived in the sheds that evening. You're looking worried, Gordon. James observed as Gordon backed down into the sheds. Gordon explained about his conversation with Mrs. Johnson that morning and the flyer he'd asked his driver to grab. Oh, yes, that. It was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? I remember hearing about it when you were in the works, Gordon. About a week or two before Tornado came to visit, if I remember rightly. I remember hearing about that too. It was all over Sodor Nightly News, according to what Driver told me. Then surely someone should have spotted her by now. Driver, what are the details on that flyer? When was she last seen? According to this, Michelle Johnson was last seen on the 15th of May, heading towards Knapford on a bicycle. Heading for Knapford on a bicycle? The police later found the bicycle a couple of streets away from the railway station. We did keep an eye out for her at the time, but unfortunately we didn't have any luck. Maybe she's not on soda anymore. She could have gone to the mainland. Not necessarily. She could easily be in Harwick, or somewhere else our rails don't run. Yes, but Bear just said her story was all over the news. That does cover all of Sodor. Hold on. Did you say she disappeared on the 15th of May? That's right, Alice. At least, that's what it says on the flyer. There was an incident with the express that afternoon. What sort of incident? When we reached Craven's Gate, Sir Handel noticed that the rear door on one of the coaches was open. However, the guard was sure he'd locked it before leaving Natford. Why didn't you mention this before? We just thought the guard had forgotten to lock it. After all, our departure from Natford was a bit rushed. We'd been running a bit late, due to the relief driver I had that day. Do you think that door could have been opened by someone jumping aboard at the last minute? It's possible, and it could have been Michelle Johnson. Are you sure that was the 15th of May? Oh, yes. I had a relief driver because Alf had taken that day, a Friday off. He and his wife were going away on a long weekend for their wedding anniversary on the 16th. You could be on to something, Alice. It could have been another passenger who was running late. After all, it's not exactly uncommon. True, but it would have been a bit of a coincidence. Then there's that photo of Michelle Johnson. It reminds me of something I've seen, but not too recently. What sort of something? Before Gordon could reply, Pip and Emma arrived. The high-speed engines smoothly sailed into their special shed, which had been built next to the main sheds. I'm not quite sure, but it was something in London. She may have caught the express to there. London? But you haven't been there since... That steam guard last year. 
Scotty, Tornado and I pulled the rail fan excursions for the whole week. What's this about London, Gordon? Driver, could you show that flyer to Pip and Emma? As his driver walked over to the express engines, Gordon explained the situation. We'll do what we can to help, Pip replied as Gordon's driver reached her. He held the flyer up to her and she peered at it closely. You know, this photo looks vaguely familiar to me too. What do you think of it, Emma? I'll need to see it first. Gordon's driver quickly strode down to Emma. She peered closely at the photo and her face fell. I'm afraid it doesn't ring any bells. Are you sure? Quite sure. That's odd. Is it? I mean, you are two different engines. Well, yes, but we do go everywhere together. A moment later, Henry departed to take the flying kipper. But as the other engines drifted off to sleep, Pip couldn't help puzzling over that photo. Pip was still puzzling over it the next morning as she and Emma headed up to London. Ever since they'd been built, they'd been together, always assigned to the same trains, always running over the same rails. So it followed that they'd always seen the same things. So how, Pip thought, was it possible that Emma hadn't recognised that photo at all? They soon reached London. It had been an uneventful run, and it would be business as usual here too. The high-speed engines would have a bit of a wait as they were turned. Their coaches would be swept out, the rubbish bins emptied, and so on. How's the view, Pip? As usual, you've got the best one. It was a running joke between the two engines that Pip was always stuck staring at the station concourse when they reached this end of the line. It looks like they're repainting the signal box. Pip didn't hear the rest of what her sister was saying. Of course. That's it. That's what? Philippa? Em, I've just realised. You're always down that end of the platform. We've always faced the same way. Yes, we don't need to be turned around. Which means you're never facing this end of the station. Yes, and... Oh! You think you may have seen Michelle Johnson up that end of the platform? Well, it would explain why she was familiar to me, not you. Gordon also said he saw someone like her during the steam gala. So, she could have caught the train up here. If so, then she must have gone very far. Driver, do you still have the flyer? Yes, why? Pip looked around, peering closely at the people walking along the station concourse. She didn't see anyone who looked like Michelle Johnson, but she did see somebody who may be able to help. Excuse me, porter! The porter strode over. What's going on? My driver has a flyer about a missing girl. I think she may be here, either working in the station or living nearby. You'd like me to pass this flyer around? If you could, yes. I'll do what I can. Pip and Emma's driver gave the flyer to the porter. Then the high-speed train departed for the return trip to Sodor. Over the next few days, Pip and Emma kept an eye out for Michelle Johnson whenever they were in London. That porter had been as good as his word and had passed the flyer around. But it seemed that they'd been barking up the wrong tree as there was still no sign of Michelle Johnson. She obviously hadn't contacted her parents either, as her mother was still handing out flyers at the railway station. One rainy morning, Pip and Emma arrived in London, right on schedule. Waiting for them at the end of the platform was a young woman, who looked slightly nervous and vaguely familiar. Are you Michelle Johnson? I, uh, yes. Why have you been looking for me? I know you asked Nick to hand that flyer around. It's alright, Michelle. We just want to talk. I can't go back to Sodor. Why not? Mum and Dad would be angry with me. I mean, running away on top of what happened. They're not angry, Michelle. They're worried. Worried? Yes. Your mother's been handing out flyers to passengers at Eaton after the station every morning for the last two years to find out what's happened to you. They just want to know that you're safe. Really? Really. Pip replied and she recounted what Gordon had told her. When she'd finished, Michelle glanced down, nervously. I'm not sure if I could go back. Just give them a phone call at least, said Pip and Emma's driver, who had been listening to the conversation. Michelle didn't reply for a moment, then she turned and strode away. At least we tried. Yes, replied the high-speed trains driver. One evening, a couple of days later, 
Gordon was bringing his coaches to the platform at Barrow in Furness. He'd been glad to hear that Pip and Emma had found Michelle Johnson. However, he'd seen that Mrs. Johnson was still handing out the flyers at East Knapford Station, even that morning. Excuse me, does this train stop at East Knapford? It stops at all the stations on the line. Gordon frowned as he saw who had spoken. May I ask what is your name? Michelle Johnson. Gordon gasped. Pip and Emma told me they had seen you in London, but your mother was still handing out flyers this morning. I thought it would be best if I did this in person. Would Mum be at the station now? No, I've only seen her in the mornings. (whistles) You'd better get aboard. Michelle dashed for the first coach. Once she was aboard, Gordon departed. He soon reached Vickerstown, about a minute or so ahead of schedule. While his passengers disembarked and boarded, he called the station master over. The big engine made a simple request, asking the station master to pass a message to East Knapford. The station master was happy to help out. Night had fallen by the time Gordon arrived at East Knapford Station. At the end of the platform, Michelle's parents were waiting. Michelle? Michelle turned from where she'd just climbed down from the coach. She smiled nervously for just a moment. Thank goodness you're safe, Mrs. Johnson said as Michelle joined them. We're glad to have you home, Michelle. Michelle gestured over her shoulder. It was the engines, she said, and she explained what Gordon and Emma had done. Her parents turned to say thank you to the blue engine, only to see him pulling out of the station. Well, they could always do that tomorrow, they thought. Right now, their family was back together, for the first time in two years. They had a lot to catch up on.